All right, guys, welcome back. Today's video is all about the Black Lotus going to the Magic 30. I'm right here at Mainframe in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Mainframe is the only framing place I go to these days. No Joanne's Fabrics here. It is owned by Julie Barrow and Kyle Abernathy, both artists. As you know, Julie Barrow is uh, one of the original 25 Magic artists. She's not here today due to medical reasons, but Kyle's here. He's gonna help us map this uh, iconic piece of artwork. Let's take a look. All right. Kyle, how's it going? Hey, good, how are you? Good, you got your little logo shirt going on there. I yeah, like that. Yeah, frame. Now, uh, real quick guys, before we cut to the video, to the, the matting and the clear bagging of the Black Lotus, uh, why don't you tell everybody briefly what you guys do and uh, how to kind of do business with you guys? Sure, um, we uh, mainframe custom picture framing. Uh, we do custom picture framing uh, with a focus on uh, archival uh, archivalness of, of, of materials and taking care of the product and uh, making sure that the art is beautifully pre uh, presented as well as being uh, safely uh, stored. So um, we, uh, you can reach us at seattlemainframe.com um, and uh, that's our website, and uh, yeah, we'd love to help out. And uh, also, you and Julie are artists, right? That's right. Yeah, I met you guys at Georgetown when Julie Barrow had the uh, the uh, gallery, um, and you were one of the artists there? Right. Uh, okay. Fab Jab Gallery was uh, Julie and I. Uh, we had a gallery where that focused a lot on illustration and um, surrealist art as well. Right. Yeah. And uh, last question, uh, what is your guys' like, kind of focus, you know, your signature thing you guys do here at Mainframe that's different than other framing shops? Um, I think that being artists, we, we have an eye for the art, um, how to preserve the art, and for design as far as presenting the art. Also having run galleries, we kind of um, have a good eye for, um, uh, for presentation and for artist presentation for sale and uh, uh, that kind of thing. Right, you guys have done shows and other uh, large projects too. That's right. All right, Kyle, you excited? I'm really excited. All right, let's get the energy going. See this. All right, guys, enjoy the video, let's go. Vintage Magic, game, collect, invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit vintagemagic.com. All right, guys, we're back. So, Kyle, you're going to explain your process on how do you go about matting this, uh, some concerns or you know changes than the typical. What do you think? Sure. My, my main concern is getting uh, it protected so that there's nothing on the surface of the painting. Um, and doing that uh, without using any kind of adhesives. Um, so, and then getting uh, making sure that all the materials throughout the entire package is uh, acid-free and inert, so that um, th there's no kind of off-gassing or, or acids or anything that can affect the art in negatively at all. So that's the goal here. Uh, there's a few challenges with this piece um, that might be different from another piece. Uh, so we're gonna do a few little um, special kind of customizations to accommodate uh, the signature uh, on the back. Oh, let's take a look at that. Yeah. If you wanna, oh, put that for me. There it is. So this was originally, guys, I may have mentioned this before, there was a COA and it was notarized and signed by Peter Atkinson. I don't know where that is. I think the owner, the original owner might have it still, but we're trying to locate it. Regardless, it was in a very long frame. So the COA and the art, the art was on top, COA. And then the signature was on the back. And it was kind of a, kind of a, uh, kind of a, I don't know, foam core too. Mm -hmm. So Kyle, why don't you talk about how you're gonna do this? Yeah, so um, we are, the, the minimal matting we need uh, to accommodate the composition uh, of the board is one and five eighths inch matting. So I'm gonna cut uh, uh, just a basic white um, archival museum mat um, to uh, accommodate the, the window size for the painting uh, with a one and five eighths inch border. And then on the back, through Art Care Foam Core, which is a special archival foam core, we're going to uh, cut an opening for this signature 
Um, so what will end up happening, which I think will really be pretty cool, is you'll, you'll have this uh, nice protected uh, packaging that you'll be able to see the signature um, on the back as well as the front uh, painting itself. All right. Sounds great. All right, we're gonna let Kyle get to work. And uh, Kyle, what do you estimate how long this is gonna take the procedure? Oh, something like this, um, probably about thirty minutes or so. Okay, is all. And guys, again, you know, I've done many, many sketches, uh, framing with them, spent tens of thousands of dollars. They've been a hundred percent awesome. Our uh, collectors have loved it. So again, please check them out. And Kyle, how do you feel handling? This is the most valuable magic item ever. Let alone Frazetta had an Egyptian queen piece sold for like 5.3 million. So I think second most valuable uh, fantasy art piece ever at $4 million. What, what does it feel like to you, really? It's just uh, so cool. I've been a fan of Magic the Gathering uh, since I was, you know, in high school, you know, playing around the lunch table. So um, getting to see uh, uh, this piece in person and being able to handle it in person, obviously, as carefully as possible. Um, is just a real cool treat and an honor to be able to uh, uh, be a part of this piece's history. All right, Kyle, that was awesome. So thank you again, Kyle. Guys, I'm gonna do some little action shots. Kyle's gonna get this done for us and uh, enjoy the video. All right, guys, a little in action spot. So what are we doing, Kyle? Uh, we're just cutting the mat and the foam core down to the proper exterior size. In this case, uh, eight and three quarter inch by 10 and a quarter. What is, what is this called, this huge thing? Uh, this is our wall cutter. Okay, so it's just it's for large things too. <laughs> yeah, uh, up to 60 inches and uh, in vertical uh, cut, um, glass, acrylic, mat board, foam glass. core, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Is it like a diamond cutter? No, uh, glass wheel uh, scores the glass and then, uh, and then it hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, whenever we're cutting glass, will um, break along that score. Got it, okay. Yeah. Never seen this in action. This is more custom. This is not like when you go to like Joann's and there's like the pre-made. That's usually not even archival sometimes, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Ready-mades uh, aren't usually made out of the best product and they're usually not archival. Uh, that's the great thing about customs. Not only can you get a custom design that is uh, specific in size to the piece, right. but everything throughout can be of, of the highest quality. Uh, if that is what you prefer. Sure. Uh, All right, let's go. Prefer. Look here. What are we doing? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to cut the mat. Oh, yeah, for the mat. Yeah. So, guys, uh, while Kyle's cutting the mat, the foam core, uh, this glue here was from the original um, framing on the side, so it is a little bit longer here. And Kyle said that uh, the ideal way here is for the owner, who is uh, anonymous, to have it inspected by a conservationist. They uh, actually used a conservationist uh, for some other art, and they were really good at uh, helping preserve the condition of the art, right? It's, you know, getting up the pH uh, right. Uh, the, the acidity, you know, basically even. Right. So glue guys, Sharpies, that kind of thing, actually is very acidic. In time, it can destroy the art, destroy the surface, and, you know, it's, it's bad. That's the same as cigarette smoke, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. That's what I experienced with the art that I had to deal with. Right. So This looks like it's ATG tape, which is an adhesive that we use in framing quite a bit. It's actually inert as far as its acidity. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I don't think that that's going to hurt the art, but removing it can damage that illustration board, um, which is why you want to make sure it's uh, whoever's working on it, um, you know, has training and is reputable. Uh, so, you, do you think they eventually this will be cut off if, um, if a conservation is working on it? Or do you think keeping the initial surface? Uh, is always the best. Always, uh, yeah. Our default is to keep uh, the art um, preserved as is, okay. and and just removing whatever's unwanted, whether it's buffering with the acids or uh, removing the adhesives safely. Um, the, the kind of a last ditch effort is any kind of altering of the art itself. Right. Which, which even even though the background, the border, isn't necessarily part of the painted part of the art, the the entire package of the art is. That illustration board and that extra border. So, got it. Yeah. All right. Well, this you're cutting. All right. Perfect. 
Yeah, we do hand cut mats. It gives us 100% control. What kind of training have you guys had? Is just through just doing your own art or? Doing our own art. Um, I was trained, I kind of apprenticed under a, a master carpenter that was a framer. Oh, wow. Um, so I had that privilege. And then uh, framing a lot of my own art. And then just, uh, we've been in business for five years. So I've done thousands of frames. And uh, honestly, the best training you can get is just working. Going your own. Yep. And Julie's obviously been doing it for her art, to having a gallery, I remember there was so much art she got in. She had to, you know, obviously work on a lot of the presentation is the key. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do not skimp on presentation. That yeah, you do all this beautiful work and then you go cheap on the frame. Exactly. And makes, <laughs> makes, exactly. And then it doesn't even sell well anyway. How? Yeah, speaking of that, when you as an artist, when you have a great framing, does that help sell the art? Uh, I believe it does. So when, whenever yeah. you're framing for sale, there's a little bit of a different uh, mindset to that. You uh, you, you don't want to pick a design that the that might turn off the, the buyer. Uh, that's a, so specific to to maybe their to such a specific choice that it might not fit their decor. Um, so you want to keep it fairly simplistic, but allowing the art to shine. So you don't want the design of the piece to take away from the art itself. Uh, but at the same time, um, even a simple design can really elevate and and be. Uh, uh, kind of elegant in, in this presentation. Right. So. All right. Perfect. That's how it's done, guys. What is that tool? This is a bone. Uh, it's just uh, if there's a little bit of, um, of mat that's right. out of place, it can kind of safely uh, put it back in its place. Why are you choosing white? White, um, it's a... Not, not like a beige or a taupe. Or... Yeah, so um, I prefer uh, a bright white like this for this kind of a, of a painting. I think aesthetically it just looks good. Um, if you go off-white, uh, a lot of times it can either make the art or the matte look dingy, kind of like older, like like the, the off-white isn't from uh, an intentional pigment choice, but right. a, uh, an aging effect. Okay. So I just like a nice crisp white um, in, in this instance. Now, if we were, if we were doing a full frame, uh, we, we could look at uh, different design options that would go well with the molding and the piece itself. But okay. just basic white is uh, is usually a good choice. Okay, great. Okay, so I think we're gonna wanna. All right, we'll come. All right, so we're trying to get this back part set up. Kyle is exacto knifing and then his measurements on the back. This way, the front has the. The mat, and then the back was able to get this part too. All right, and the sandwich begins. Lotus sandwich. So it worked out great. Let's see that back. Oh, look at that. Let's see that back real quick, pal. Look at that, guys. Awesome. Now that paper, that black paper, is that archival? Or that yeah, conservation? Sure is, yeah. I feel like this right here is not archival. That's like that that. Uh, tape that you get from the oh, right. rose. Yeah, that yeah, needs to be, right. yeah, when conservation it. Exactly. Yeah, because that's that, remember that tape when you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like the brown packing yeah, tape. the brown packing <laughs> tape from, uh, that's not archive. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's interesting, I was in Vatican City and Italy uh, in the summer and there was just, you know, just looking at, so I was just, I was the Smithsonian also and seeing how, uh, the presentation, obviously, the this hundred years old plus arts, you know, just in time, right? This is uh, just one of those things. I I have no doubt this will one day become a museum item. Oh yeah, I, I would hope. Absolutely. This is this little thing. All right, so we're back. Kyle, what well, we got? A little uh, gluing going on. Yeah. Right. So I'm. In order to kind of keep the piece within the the mat, I'm putting uh, some. Um, it's it's referred to as pinwheel mounting or sink mounting, where I'm putting some foam core um, against the the strips against the foam core backing, 
and that will just allow for um, uh, the mat to rest on the foam core uh, and, and not um, have to use any adhesives to hold the piece itself in place. All right, cool. And then that back, we put a little glue, uh, that's archival glue. Archival glue uh, onto the foam core and the mat. So there's no adhesive coming into contact with the art whatsoever. Um, it's basically just encasing the artwork inside uh, its mat board and foam core home. Awesome. That's that glue, so we're gluing it together so the mat will be on there. Awesome. And the weights will help seal it up. How quick is that glue dry usually? Uh, you're about 15 minutes uh, on the outside. Oh, brush it. Nice. Just move it out a little bit so that it doesn't go where we don't want it. Okay. So the frame package. That's beautiful, man. Will, Absolutely gorgeous. All the edges are protected. I like that. Very nice. Nice. Put some weights down. Yeah. And there's no adhesive or anything non-archival touching the artwork. That's key. Is leather archival? Um, it's uh, for this kind of thing. Is uh, you wouldn't want it against the artwork um, for storage purposes. Right. Uh, these are little uh, paper weights okay. that that are safe for like not stuffing or marking up things. All right. And yeah, like SpongeBob. Fifteen minute later. All right, so we are at the final process. It's all clear bag now. And uh, what's gonna happen is we're probably gonna have a lot of people take pictures with this baby. Uh, the plastic does produce a glare somewhat. Um, so what do you recommend? If, well, what I'm hoping for the back, if you flip it over, flip it over real quick. Just flip the piece. Oh, it's beautiful. So it's kind of, a, just one tape where I can put it here and I can open it up. Sure. And, that, and that's what I, like, I don't want it to seal it up. But typically, obviously, you would seal it up super tight, um, you know, uh, and then you're done. But in this particular case, I want to do that. Also, guys, interesting, a lot of people feel like, uh, don't understand that framing is not about what it costs of the painting. It's the square footage of the art. So... This matting, and like Kyle was saying, you know, if we frame this, it would be around $300. Uh, for $4 million, that's a good deal. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, we don't, yeah, we charge by the by the united inch, not the yeah. the worth of the, the piece. So what kind of tape is that, scotch tape? This is scotch, um, you know what, so so that it's tabbed. The tab, oh, that's easy, yeah. New, just something that's quick, yeah. Yeah, I'll just awesome. do, a, do a little fold here. Scotch so tape is not archival, but it's on plastic, doesn't it? Yeah, matter. yeah, it's not coming anywhere near the art. All right, so. let's, there it is. Let's hold that up for me. Uh, put it, yeah. Perfect, right there, guys. Right? So now it's, yeah, so typically you have it a little tighter, right? Like, oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is for ease of use. For ease of, uh, it, and getting in and out. Cause right. uh, the, if it was very tight, um, you'd probably be tearing the bag. Uh, you'd probably be um, possibly damaging the edges of the mat right. and foam core. So this will just be nice and easy, protected, but easy to get in and out. Wonderful. All right, we'll close up here. Boy, have we aged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, Magic 30. We're going to this awesome convention to celebrate Magic's 30th anniversary. And look at that. Show the back real quick. This is the beautiful job mainframe here in Seattle. They did Seattle, Washington. If you ever have any framing needs, uh, been uh, awesome with your time. Uh, only trust you guys. Seriously, guys, check them out. Mainframe, what's the website? Uh, SeattleMainframe.com. Awesome. And they, you, by the way, guys, this is, they don't just do Washington State. You can do worldwide. So if you have any artwork, seriously, tell them Daniel sent you. Uh, they can accommodate anything. We also actually, uh, through, we've framed uh, play mats oh. uh, before, and we've developed a way of framing the play mat that is as safe and archival as possible for that material. That's correct. I had those Power 9 play mats you guys did, and... It was a big hit at this Gen Con convention. We gave one away as a, a big prize. Yeah. It was awesome. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. And make sure uh, I make it to the convention, not the casino with this thing. 
guys, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I'm here to share with you more about our deck and set collector fulfillment service. The deck fulfillment service caters to the player. And what that basically means is if you are a player looking to fulfill your old school magic deck, a uh, certain power nine or key pieces in your vintage deck or dual lands in your legacy deck, we have the inventory and the resources to help you fulfill your needs. Next, we have the set collector fulfillment service. This really caters more to the collector. Oftentimes I've been asked, hey Dan, can you help me find this specific graded card for your, this set? Or Dan, can you find me these 20 cards left in my beta set? It doesn't matter what you're looking for, even if it's like every single Sarah Angel possible out there, I can help you out. My resources and extensive network in Magic the Gathering, I was able to help thousands of clients all over the world fulfill their needs. I've made it my mission at VintageMagic.com to be your one-stop shop for all your collector needs. For any significant item or collection, we're able to travel anywhere in the world to meet you. The reason why my clients love this service because it saves you time. What happens is collectors and players often search all over online or vendors and they never find exactly what they're looking for. By going to us, we are the only one-stop shop who can help you with your needs. Using our service gets you exactly what you want and saves you time and money. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.